Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box 107, and the name is Doc. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. Okay, first it looks like we have our RP SMA dual band antenna that covers 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. Next, it looks like we have our ESP32 module with round 240 by 240 IPS display. Pretty cool to have this neat round display with the microcontroller built right into it. And it being USB-C is a nice bonus. Next, we've got this USB-A male to USB-C male adapter. And this looks like our RTL8812BU dual band USB Wi-Fi module. That should work in conjunction with the antenna we pulled out earlier. This is the USB 3.0 docking base with extension cable. This is a neat little USB extension that gives you a base so you have a vertical facing USB female port and you can see how that could be cool for the antenna to stick down in or this display module with the adapter. Next, we've got the exclusive HackerBox DEF CON 32 mini badge kit. Now, this isn't my first time seeing this particular badge. I got a chance to see that when I helped out HackerBoxes a bit at their booth during DEF CON 32. What was really cool was to see a lot of folks use this as their first soldering experience and to see folks over in the hardware hacking village putting these together and the sense of pride they had when they did their first project. This is the Evil Wireless Tower glitter sticker. That looks pretty darn cool. There's a bit of a story regarding this logo and sticker you can check out in the Instructable. It's kind of neat. And as always, last but not least, we've got our HackerBox 107 collectible reference card. On this side, we've got a little poem or haiku related to wireless and got a list of some Wi-Fi hacking tools. And on the flip side, we've got the pinouts for our ESP32 display module. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Did you know you can get custom PCBs made starting at only $5? Not only is it easy to upload and order your own designs on PCBWay, but you can also choose from a wide range of shared community designs. I've been considering adding some learn to solder kits to the inventory at our local makerspace, and these little flashlight PCBs seem like a perfect fit. Watch how simple it is to add them to my cart, customize any options I need, then wait for a quick production approval from PCBWay's team to ensure everything's in order. It's that easy. I should have these in just a couple of weeks. Check the link in the description for more details. And again, we thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Just like they always do, the folks from Hacker Boxes have included a great set of instructions here available on Instructables. I have a link to that in the description. Even if you don't have the Hacker Box, you might find it pretty handy. The first thing the Instructable has us start with is this mini badge, and it's not too complicated. The switch can go in either direction. The coin cell clip is positioned to match the outline on the PCB, and each of the three LEDs are inserted with the long pin and the hole that's got the plus sign. So the first thing I put on here is the switch, and you'll see I'm gonna take and go ahead and preload a little bit of solder on one of these pads here. And then I'm gonna use some tweezers after this to tack that in place in the one corner. Then I'm gonna come around and solder the rest of the pins down. And apologies in this one part here, I'm off the screen, but you'll see the end result. Okay, next you're gonna see me attach the battery holder. I'm gonna start out by putting some solder on this left pad here and get that kind of loaded up. And remember, when you have these connections like this, you don't need to put any solder in the middle part. So no solder will go in that circle. And then we're gonna put the holder in place. And I'm gonna start out with some tweezers holding that down while I apply some heat to get that to attach. And for whatever reason, you'll see here in a moment, I end up holding it with my fingers while I'm doing the last little bit of heat, which of course, I should have been a little smarter than that. That got a little warm, but I was able to get that first side to stick. And then after that, it's just a matter of adding some solder to this pad on the right and letting that attach properly with a little bit of heat onto the connector. And I did come back and add a little bit more solder to the original pad. Next, it was time to get ready to put the LEDs in. And just like the note says, 
the long leg is the positive leg, and that'll go in the positive hole. But you gotta remember from the front, that's gonna be the top hole. So you'll see here, I'll put all three LEDs in, making sure that the top hole gets the longer leg. And then I solder all those in. And then I clip the leads. Then I used a little alcohol and gave everything a good scrub. And cut this one lead a little bit closer. Then I put the chain on. And then lastly, I opened and installed the battery and flipped things on to give it a test. I think that turned out pretty darn well. I love the RGB LEDs and the full color PCB is so much fun. Next, the Instructable has us working with the ESP32 display. So as a basic health check here, we're gonna just plug in the power and we'll see the green LEDs turned on. But you'll notice if we flip it over here, like the documentation says, there's nothing on the display because it's not actually turned on yet. And once I press this middle button, I'll flip it over and we do see the analog clock face as the docs say. So that's a good basic health test and shows that everything should be okay to move forward. As we move forward, these first few instructions are just making sure that you have the Arduino IDE installed and that you use the board manager within Arduino to find the ESP32 board support, which I can see I already have installed here, but I'm gonna click the update button. Normally that would say install if you don't have that, but I'm gonna go ahead and update that. Next, I go to tools, library manager, and I search for TFT ESPI. As you can see here, I already have that installed. If you don't have it installed, you should see a button that says install and it will be easy enough for you to add it. Next, the Instructable tells us to go to where the Arduino libraries are stored on our local machine and look for the folder for TFT underscore ESPI. And within that folder, we're gonna look for the user underscore setup underscore select dot H file. And we're gonna comment out the line specified, the user underscore setup dot header file. Then we're gonna locate and uncomment the line with the setup 200 GC 9A01. Then we're gonna save it and get out of it. Next, the Instructable tells us to go to File, Examples, TFT, ESPI, Smooth Graphics, and Color Wheel. But as you see here, when I navigate to that, I don't see Color Wheel. I just see these two things, no Color Wheel. So instead of worrying why I wasn't showing up in my Arduino interface, I just went over to the Bodmer GitHub and grabbed the actual file and just did a simple copy and pasted it into Arduino, compiled it and sent it to the device. And as you can see here, I think that's working as expected. So that looks pretty good. Next, the Instructable tells us to get this display underscore values sketch. So I grab that and it's supposed to give some good examples of showing how to move stuff and write things to this display. So we get that pushed over to it and this is what it looks like. So that's pretty cool. And there are tons of other great examples referenced here in the Instructable. I especially like the gauge example there. It makes me want to make one of these for my old farm truck that I've got because it doesn't have a tachometer. It'd be kind of cool to have that in there and you know where you could hit a button and cycle through different gauges. But I wanted to try something a little more personal that could be kind of fun. Around this time every year, I start getting ready for this fundraiser called Extra Life. I'll put a link in the description so you can uh, get more info about it. But essentially, we try to raise money and play games for 24 hours. And we raise money for a local children's hospital in Kentucky, Norton Children's Hospital. As you can see here, this is our ninth year. And to date, we've raised almost $7,000. And hopefully we can add a couple more to that this year. Now, one of the neat things you see here uh, when you sign up each year, you have access to like an API from Donor Drive, the folks that handle the back end for the donations. And if you look, it spits back a JSON. It's pretty simple. There's no security or anything to deal with. It's all kind of public info. But one of the things it shows you here is the donation amount. So I thought it'd be neat if I could get some code working to display my ongoing donation total and refresh it every minute. Now this is the code I came up with. I've got it on my GitHub and I'll put a link in the description to it. And it's nothing fancy. And uh, I just threw some stuff at ChatGPT and it spit back some stuff and kind of back and forth and did some tweaks, of course. And all this stuff you're seeing at the beginning here is like an array and that's image data. And I created that 240 by 240 logo and a circular thing for uh, 
extra life with some space at the bottom to display the amount but I could not figure out a way to actually just load that from an SD card. So if any of you out there play with this, I guess there's some kind of contention or special switching. Has anyone had success in using the display and the SD card in the same sketch? If so, let me know. I'm interested to see how to do that if you have an example. But anyway, I ended up looking at how the images were done on that gauge example from the Instructable, and it referenced this website. So I took that image and put there, and it spit back this format that's expected if you just want to embed it as an array. That's what that is where I converted that. So that just kind of embeds the image inside the sketch. And real quick before I forget, the only thing I had to add that was not part of the HackerBox was the JSON library here. So with all that said, let's see if it worked. And starting right now, I had zero donations for the year and I'm going to add a donation and we'll see if it shows up when it repolls. I'm back here turning on this thing. It's going to come on. All right, I'm going to hit complete purchase over here and hopefully within a minute we will see that update. Maybe I'll fast forward to make sure. Oh, there it is right there. How about that? So that works. That's pretty cool. If you're feeling generous and want to help us get this number to keep on climbing, we would love to have your support. Check out this QR code or check out the link I'm going to put in the description. Next, I wanted to play around with the wireless adapter. So I plug that into my X1 Carbon. The Instructable makes mention of a bunch of Wi-Fi hacking tools, which reminded me that I hadn't played with Kali Linux in over 10 years. I went and grabbed that ISO, popped it on a USB stick. When I booted up, I goofed around a little bit and did a couple of speed tests to see what kind of speed I could get. This is an AC card, but I don't think I'm getting full on AC speeds. It may be something with the driver or some other setting. I may look and actually pay closer attention to what it's associating at and try it on some different machines to see what kind of speeds it gets. But as you can see here, it is not my connection here. It's got plenty of overhead to go faster than that. But 250 is still not a slouch and was perfectly fine for me goofing around and testing here. I'd be interested to know if any of you guys did any local or internet benchmarking with it and what kind of speed you all saw. Now, there are a bunch of things on there and a bunch of things that can get you in trouble. So if you don't have permission to mess with a network, please don't do it. Don't be one of those guys, right? I figured I'd pick a pretty safe thing to demonstrate here, and that's just Kismet, kind of one of the OG war driving type utilities. And as you can see here, it works just fine. And with that, we've checked out another fun hacker box. I'm interested to see what any of you guys have done with your displays. Let me know down in the comments. I really enjoyed this one. It looks like we're gonna have ourselves another giveaway. The nice folks at Hacker Boxes have graciously offered to send a Hacker Box 107 to a randomly picked commenter. We'll be picking the comment on October 25th, 2024. And remember, Hacker Boxes only ships to US addresses for this giveaway. So if your comment's picked, but you don't have a US shipping address that we can use, we'll need to pick someone else. Good luck. At the time of this recording, there are still Hacker Box 107s in stock. If you don't win the giveaway, you want to get one check them out or go ahead and subscribe hey if you made it this far thanks for watching hope to see you again next time take care bye bye